Ollie is clearly the master turtle catcher at this point. Yeah, boy, was I recording? I was. Yeah, boy. Another one. Another one. Ah! <laughs> because it bites and holds on. Ah! And every time I move it, it clamps down more. Tom, Thomas. It's a scorpion. Holy f Okay, okay. Ready? Look at that. Oh, f fucking. What a beauty find. You got him? Scoop him. Ready? Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Look at him. Oh. You know it is? oh it's a scorpion. Wait. If I was to keep this. I actually need a DWA license. <sighs> this, this is. <sighs> this is Boothus occidentalis, which is called uh, the yellow scorpion. Um, it's part of the Boothus genus, which Boothids are actually the most venomous scorpion spe uh, genus there is. Uh, you can tell this by the thick tail. It has thick tail and then very. Go to that camera. Keep going. Keep going. Has yeah. a thick tail and very thin pincers. Um, that's always the way of scorpions. You have the thick tail means that is their main defense system or way catch their prey. Um, so they catch their prey with the tail and they just hold on to it with the pincers. They don't crush with the pincers. They let the venom do the work. Um, so that's why it has the fat tail. Um, this species is found throughout um, the southern part of Europe and the northern part of Africa. Um, the venom actually ranges in potency depending on where you find it. Um, this one in the European part isn't as toxic. Um, we probably wouldn't have too, too many problems if this one were to sting us. But the ones on the other side of the Mediterranean in North Africa have a far greater potency. Um, and those ones you definitely have to be careful with. Um, it's also one of the largest scorpions in Europe um lucky enough when we went to france we actually found a, a smaller scorpion species uh, and you can tell the stinger was nowhere near the size of this one um, this one is uh definitely one we wouldn't want to get stung by so it's time to release the boothid scorpion boothus occidentalis the yellow scorpion um i have to be careful releasing this because you can see the size of that tail which means it's obviously pretty pretty deadly um, so let's put it on here watch it go good job nice one it's on, it's on, it's on, on it's on me <laughs> It's on me again. Oh. oh. You got one. Very, what? Did you hear that? No, what was it? Made a little... <laughs> um, very dark coloration, because obviously it's a very cloudy day. Um, came over to this rock pile, because rocks are always the best. It's great for basking, it's great for hiding. Everything is good about rock piles. Um, so we just flipped over, found a big one, and then boom. We got a, almost a fully regen tail too. You can see it's got a little bit of a stump there. Um, you can see it gets these spines on the side, um, but the actual regen part doesn't go at any of those. It's just very plain. Um, really yellow belly on this one. Pretty cool, really. Yellow belly. I haven't seen any other ones have a yellow belly, so this one has a very mottled pattern too, with mm. the white and stuff. Can see how easily it'll blend in and sort of a granite rock and stuff like that <laughs> we found an adult and a baby and as you can tell by the size difference these guys get way bigger than they are when they're younger damn look at them look at the actual size comparison oh, oh. but they are actually opportunistic predators so uh if this one found this one um it's probably gonna get <laughs> munched um they're not that fussy about what they eat and this little guy is uh He's trying to go for it. Hegro. <laughs> so it's time to say goodbye to these little geckos. Put the baby one side over there and add it over there. 
because we got to run because apparently there's a scorpion just over here. Let's go. The half sun into the half. Yeah. Here we go. Damn, these are much more lively. So we one. found another in Africa. They can actually be fatal, but on this side of the Mediterranean, they're just going to kind of do swelling. It's got a quite mild venom. Um, nothing too serious, but still something to be cautious of, especially if you were allergic, you could possibly lose your life because of this. Because um, it is oh, oh, your finger. pretty cool to find. Yeah, um, oh, I sting in my hat too. <laughs> Hope he doesn't get me through the fabric. Um, but we'll take some pictures of this and then put him back in the rock pile that we found him in. Got him. It was basking and it ran up my trousers. <laughs> Oh, he's angry one. Your crotch has made him angry. <laughs> oh, he's, he's an angry boy. No wonder he's got a full tail. He's like the boss guy. Damn, his tail's sick compared to the region yeah. one. They actually keep the... Oh, his mouth! They keep this the white bar pattern. Mm. Um, and the spininess the whole way along. Violated me. Hey, we've fucking done it, lad. We've done it, lad. What is it? The snake is under there now. Okay, good shout on the rock. All right, okay, holy. Is it a, a venomous one? Uh, I haven't fully identified. Oh my god. Go on, you got this. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Oh, wait, shit. <laughs> is that the venomous one? <laughs> is that actually? Oh. <laughs> this yeah. is. Um. <laughs> Never seen the boy so happy. Oh has, he got, has he just eaten? He's got something in his belly. Maybe. This is a Western Montpellier snake. This is arguably the largest snake in Europe. Obviously, not this specific one. Um, it's the largest snake in Europe. Can grow up to two meters long, and that's six and a half feet. That's the same length as me it can go from this size to this size um it is rear fang venomous um so that means it did bite me i've got a little bit of blood on my finger um but basically it has to kind of chew the venom into you it's similar to like a hog nose if you keep hog noses at home but it is a little bit more potent than a hog nose venom um, you can see they are diurnal predators so he is looking me directly in the eye um, and they don't have slit pupils like most people think most snakes have slit pupils um, this one has round pupils because it's obviously designed to hunt during the day um, but again you can kind of tell he's looking right at me you can tell it is the western montpellier snake um, even though the pattern is different between the young ones and the adult ones the adult ones are basically all the same coloration, um, usually a brown to grey. They can have some black on them, but they don't have anywhere near the pattern of the babies. But you can tell by the actual nose, um, I feel like they always look a little bit angry and they have that pointed snout at the front. Whoa! Whoa. Um, they always have that pointed snout at the front. Um, and they have beautiful orange eyes as well, it's really cool. Um, but the pattern on these babies, um, all these brown markings that fades as they get older and they just become a plain color so at this size it's going to basically be eating small frogs um possibly pinky mice if it found, finds a like a mouse nest um it could be eating very small lizards um those moorish geckos that's probably why it was under the rock it's probably looking around all the rocks for a moorish gecko uh, so it can eat it because there isn't a lot of small mammalian prey around here and they're mostly going to be eating other reptiles and then as they get older that's when they'll start to eat more mammals they'll be eating mice rats and then even those larger ones i said the two meter ones they're going to be eating rabbits rabbit is their main prey source it's kind of one of the big predators here in the donyana national park and um, the lynx is going to be eating rabbits and then the big western montpellier snakes are going to be eating them latin name is um malpolon um is the genus um, so cool to Am see. Am I right in saying it's a male? Uh, 
It's got a kind of long tail. It's, it's quite hard to tell at this size whether it is a male or female. Um, also, I've, I've never really seen pictures of babies, but the orange belly on it is so cool. And really, the pattern is crazy pattern on that. But yeah, it, it could have eaten a Moorish gecko. It's got like a bump in its belly there. So it is time to release the Western Montpellier snake. Um, absolutely amazed that we managed to catch this because I'm pretty sure if we would have seen it out basking, it would have been way too fast for us to catch. So flipping the rock was probably the only way we're ever going to catch one. And to find a baby, I thought it was possibly the Iberian smooth snake because it does have that bar across the back of its neck that it could have been the Iberian smooth snake. But after picking it up and after getting bit, I realized it was the rear fang venomous Western Montpellier snake. So we'll put him back under here to digest his Moorish gecko meal that he probably had um, and we'll release him under here. Should I just use my hand? You got eyes on it? You got eyes on it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't I don't see it, so. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. Oh, under the rock. Boom. Boom! Is it Boom! Was it a skink? Well, it's not a Moorish gecko. I think it is. Is it? So what I actually think this is is a western Samodromus. Um, there's three species of Samodromus lizards that are found in this southern part of Spain. Um, this would be, because of the size, would be the western Samodromus. Um, I believe the Latin name is Samodromus orientalis. Um, and it's one of the smaller species. The other species in the area are a bit larger. You've got the Samodromus hispanicus and the algericus. Um, and it's pretty cool that we found it in this burrow. So I think they actually make burrows that are south facing. Um, so that when the sun, most of the day, the sun actually comes into their burrow um, and then they can easily come out and warm up. It's super cool to find this because I don't think it's super common in this area. Um, especially the larger ones are more commonly found. But to find one of these small ones is pretty cool because it, it can be confused with a lot of other smaller species. Um, a bit like that um, Acanthodactus we found on the sand dunes. So we'll watch how we mucked up his burrow a bit, so kind of just give him a little place to, to start and then he can do his own thing in there. Um, but yeah, side of the road, spotted it and then we chased it into his burrow, so couldn't be happy with that. Welcome to El Rocio. So I was walking and I saw this rock and you see that little hole there? I saw a little lizard, a little face pop out. So I found and I looked around and I started poking sticks through and what shot out into Tom's hand? Boom, the old flank and approach. Um, this is the Andalusian wall lizard. Uh, the Latin name for this species is Podarchis valtori. Um, there's actually two species of wall lizard in this area. Um, you have this one, Podarchis valtori, and you have Podarchis carbonelli, which is the carbonel's wall lizard. Um, this one is the more common of the two. The other one, the carbonelli, is endangered. This one, I believe, is least concern. Um, the best way to actually tell the difference between this and the other wall lizard species, um, the other wall lizard species doesn't have green on the back, it only has green on the sides. And when we look at the back of this lizard, um, it has green on the back of it. Um, so Sorry about the audio guys, we are on the phone because we didn't have the equipment, we just suddenly saw it. Um, so the green back means it is the Andalusian wall lizard, which is native to the Iberian Peninsula here in southwestern Spain. Obviously, that is where the Iberia is. So it's really cool to find this. And this is an adult, um, probably adult female. Um, and you can see the regen tail 
here we have all the pattern and the green coloration um, and then the, here it stops and we just have this plain brown one so at some point she's dropped this tail but it does take a while to grow it this long so it would have been quite a while ago and then she's grown it back so pretty cool to find a little wall lizard like this so now it is time to release our little Andalusian wall lizard back where we found it into this rock that's full of holes and you will see how quick he is he'll literally not do anything <laughs> it's always this way every um, single time but once they do start moving they're very quick there you go he's realized oh, oh. oh. oh no, he's there yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> all right so guys uh big rock under tree saw a snake called tom oh, tom has been oh. mashed up yeah see if you can grab it by its head so this is this is what we caught at, I'm tired of my bloody tissues um, in this very spiky palm bush um, Ollie actually spotted it after he flipped over a rock this is another western Montpellier snake this one is slightly larger than one earlier um, as you can see still diurnal species it can literally follow my hand um, it doesn't have those slit pupils it has round pupils so it can see in the day Whoa. it's a larger species a large, um, larger variety of the same species um, oh, yeah. <laughs> again rear fang venomous um, so you, if, if you might have seen when it bit me I was quite quick to get it off because if it chews the venom into you that's when you can be in trouble um, it's still got quite a lot of pattern on it um, but it has faded out quite a bit so as it gets bigger it will um, fade so yeah this one um, actually looks like it's got some darker bits on it but has faded so as you can see, I'm trying to keep it focused on these fingers rather than the fingers that are actually holding it um, because that, because it's quite a visual snake, it hunts during the day and um, doesn't hunt really by scent, hunts by sight. Um, so I really want to keep it on here. It's a bit like handling a cobra really, you want to, so <laughs> got to distract it, but awesome find, awesome yellow belly. This is really the signature pattern and color um, on the bottom of a Western Montpellier snake. They tend to keep this coloration on their ventral scales throughout their entire life and then the top bit will fade to a light brown, um, sometimes even a dark brown. Um, but super cool to find another one and this one was a little bit more chaotic getting it in that, <laughs> finding it in that bush. So yep, we'll um, take in some precautionary pictures um, and we'll put this guy back because he is very angry and you can see I have to keep distracting him because if I move too much this hand, um, he realizes he's being held. Um, so we'll put him back into this palm from the section because he seems to be nice and safe from predators. And we'll let him go so he can catch any of those wall lizards that we just found because um, clearly he's probably eating the baby ones and the baby Moorish geckos. So awesome find and hopefully my hands don't swell up. <laughs> So guys, that concludes the trip. So it has been an all round great success. We found way more than we could have hoped for. So many different sightings of so many different animals. We couldn't be happier with how many we found. Uh, loads of things we learned like about extending the time. That was a big help. Obviously the France one was 48 hours and this one was over a course of a few days, which was great and it was really helpful. Yeah, we were dealing with a lot of the heat, um, which is obviously good for finding reptiles, but it meant we could do short bursts for different areas and big help this time, we had a car so we could visit loads of different habitats because the Doñana National Park has so many different areas to cover so that we could get the maximum variety of reptiles and amphibians. Now, I know we put a warning at the start of this video, but we're also gonna say at the end, please guys, do not attempt this. Uh, we know it's a very dangerous thing and some of the animals in the wild can be very dangerous. So please proceed with precaution and if you're not trained, definitely. Um, but we don't recommend doing this. We do it for your entertainment. We do it for your entertainment. <laughs> we do. But that being said, that has to be the highlight of the trip for me, catching our first wild snake on the channel um, and possibly, arguably, the best species that we could have found in the area. What, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask, what was your favorite? Uh, honestly, out of, out of everything, Probably the scorpion, but like the massive one we found. Yeah. That one was sick because we weren't actually expecting it. We checked iNaturalist and all that and we yeah. didn't actually see it on there. So it was like a nice surprise. Yeah. So 
Hope you enjoyed the video. We definitely enjoyed uh, filming it. We've had a great six days here in the Doniana National Park. Um, great thanks to all the staff that obviously maintain the areas. Um, all the boardwalks make it really accessible to get around the park. So we've really enjoyed our trip. And thank you to everyone that did help us film as we did have some company on this trip as well. And they did really help with the videos, which was great. So don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to comment down below because we're gonna be doing loads more like this. So don't forget to look out for that in the future. But without further ado, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.